everybody, welcome to another live stream. And if you haven't realized yet, this one is open to all subscribers to be able to comment. Uh, so uh, if you usually tune in and you're not able to join the chat, all you have to do is, if you're already a subscriber, yay, thank you. And if not, just hit that subscribe button <coughs> and you can immediately join the chat. I didn't make it a thing where uh, you have to be like a subscriber for a minute or five minutes. You just hit subscribe, you can get right in and uh, join the conversation. So with that, with so many new people in the chat, ah, oh, thanks for becoming a member anyway, James. That means you'll be able to join in in all of the live streams that we do. Uh, so to, just to reiterate, especially because we have a lot of people who are talking who usually don't, uh, please try and keep your comments on the subject matter at hand. Uh, if you ask a question during the first part of a story, uh, I might not be able to answer it, even if it's a super chat. Uh, however, when I open up each story to questions uh, and comments, oh, Boab, thank you again for your generosity, gifting five memberships. Um, but you know, that's the best time to ask your questions about that story. And then for the final 10 minutes of the stream, you can ask me anything you'd like as always. So, uh, just, just keep that in mind that the end of the stream is where to have those questions. That's right. One piece two was just announced. No details, uh, no idea as to how many episodes it'll be, if it'll be a pure season two or if it'll be spin-off specials, but you're getting more One Piece content. Hey, Holly Jervis, welcome back. Uh, oh, Arthur, what is that, is like a fireworks there? I like that. Oh, and Sadie, thank you for gifting a membership. You know, even gifting just one membership. Look, you made, you got, you made IK's, IK, IK's day. And then, by the way, if you're wondering how you get a membership, uh, YouTube selects who gets a gifted membership, and they do it based on your, uh, how much you interact with Beyond the Trailer. So if you're in a lot of the live streams, if you've been a member before, if you're a subscriber, if you leave a lot of comments, YouTube knows who would appreciate a free membership the most. So we have a lot of cool things to discuss today. Uh, I am doing an Aquaman breakdown. I actually filmed it right before, but I'm not going to have enough time to edit it because I'm going to a screening tonight for the creator. So I'm very excited to see that very early uh, screening for the creator. Oh, thank you, Dory Does Voices. Thank you, Danny. Uh, and so I will try to, uh, to do the Aquaman. Uh, oh, Mr. F, thank you for gifting five memberships. I will try to finish the Aquaman breakdown uh, when I get home. I'll get out the old laptop, try and see if I can fix that. And then in the morning, I'm going to hit the ground running with the Ahsoka breakdown because uh, on Wednesday I had something personal I had to take care of. So I'm going to hit the ground running with the Ahsoka breakdown on uh, Friday, and there will be another live stream on Friday as well. Also, if you watch the Harley Quinn show, uh, please watch the season four finale before tomorrow because we're going to talk about the ending, the very, very end of it. It sets up season five. It's incredible. So we're going to talk spoilers, and it's going to be really great. So uh, I don't, I mean, we're going to ruin the heck out of it. So if you have any interest in seeing it beforehand, oh, thank you, Randy. If you have any interest in seeing it beforehand, uh, please hop over to uh, Max, formerly known as HBO Max, uh, and check out, you know, you know, you just can watch the last 10 minutes of the season finale, quite frankly, if you want to be ready for our discussion. It's fantastic. I, I would encourage you to do it. Uh, all right, so Ma Max, I'm afraid you're not a member. It's a for again, this is a subscriber stream. Uh, all subscribers are able to comment. And Chris, that's right, the Ahsoka breakdown will go tomorrow. Ahsoka came out at a really bad time of year for me. I have a lot of personal stuff going on. Uh, it's very hard to try and balance work and a personal life, but sometimes I have to make really tough decisions, both for my health and then also, uh, you know, like staying up late and stuff. You know, I'm trying to be really responsible about that. And then also, you know, I got to make sure I have a personal life uh, and that my, the people in my personal life don't get upset with me. <laughs> you know, you, you got you to gotta figure that stuff out. So I think I do a pretty good balance, you know. Uh, I'm, I, I, I mean, I work a lot. And, and so that's right, Marduk, thank you. Um, but I always still feel guilty when I, I, when I have to step away. Uh, but for, the, for so many of you, I'd say like 99% of you understand, and that really does mean a lot to me, just so you know. All right, everybody, here we go, here we go. All right, boop. 
Uh, bond boop, as one of you said, it's time for a bond boop. So let me just tell you how this went down. So yes, Matthew Vaughn is the front runner to direct the new James Bond movie, AKA Bond 26. Uh, and I'd actually heard this. It came to me through a tip. I keep my DMs open and I got a really, really, I can't tell you the specifics of the tip because it would give away how I got the tip. But let's just say somebody who watches the show has somebody in their life who was interacting with Matthew Vaughn and it seemed they got, that, that, you know, Matthew Vaughn made it pretty clear he was going to direct the Bond movie. And so that person told me, but I could not confirm it. So I didn't want to report it because it seemed like Matthew Vaughn seemed like such an odd choice. And I mean, not totally, we're going to discuss that. Uh, but also Christopher Nolan had seemed like the front runner. And so, you know, I, if I couldn't get confirmation from my sources, I didn't want to put it out there. But uh, not just another scooper, but Daniel RPK, who I have to say has a fantastic track record. Uh, Daniel RPK, uh, also, I don't know if he said it publicly or if it was on his uh, Patreon, Patreon, but he said that he also heard that Matthew Vaughn was the front runner for Bond. So I feel now we can discuss it. I feel now we can talk about it. So, uh, so, so it's crazy. I mean, I get some really interesting tips. So by the way, you know, always appreciate it. If you get some, if you get some tea, I'll have to verify it. Uh, but, uh, you know, I've gotten some really amazing tips, uh, and had some really cool people in the entertainment industry, uh, talk to me through my open DM. So I will always keep my DMs open. Uh, all right. So Christopher Nolan, it had seemed was the front runner. Nolan wants to do it. Uh, a lot of fans want him to do it. And he is like, he is, you know, I always say the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Christopher Nolan is squeaking. Squeakity squeak, squeak, squeak. He talked more about Bond than Barbie when he was on his press tour for Oppenheimer. But some of the problems though, are that he wants lots of creative control, which I don't think Barbara Broccoli has creative control. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, um, Ben says, isn't Matthew Vaughn supposed to direct the authority for DC? That was another thing that I had thought when I heard this. However, I told you that the authority was a misdirect. I bet you he's not even, I bet you James Gunn isn't even doing an authority movie. I think that obvious, I think that honestly, that that was just a misdirect so that you, he didn't give away who was going to be in Superman legacy. So, uh, so I don't think, so I don't think that's happening. Uh, but then also, oh, Jerome, always gifting one membership. Thank you, Jerome. Uh, but then also Sam Mendes basically copied Christopher Nolan for his Daniel Craig Bond movies. And so I think Christopher Nolan's Bond movies and even Carrie Fukunaga had a very Christopher Nolan type style. And so I worry that a Christopher Nolan film would just seem like more of the same, which brings me to what I see a lot of you writing down is that Matthew Vaughn has a much lighter touch as we saw with Kingsman, which was basically his James Bond. And I feel like they want a lighter tone. A lot of people have said it was very dark with Daniel Craig all the way to the ending, which was very bleak. Let's get back to uh, James Bond just having fun. Thank you for gifting a membership, Carrie. So I feel like that's, you know, that's why they would maybe be interested in Matthew Vaughn to, to take over the franchise. Uh, I liked the Kingsman movies personally. I liked them quite a bit. But then here's what's interesting. I think what's really would get fans excited is who Matthew Vaughn has history with. Taron Edgerton, Chris Porras just said, could Taron be the next Bond? You know, I would much prefer him over Aaron Taylor Johnson. I don't care that he was Eggsy in the Kingsman movies. They're clearly not gonna make any more Kingsman movies. So I wouldn't mind if it was Eggsy, quite frankly. Although that does seem a little bit too on the nose. But Taron Edger could, could maybe do something. You know who'd be a great M? You know, of course, played by most recently Judy Dench and then Rafe Fiennes? Colin Firth. Colin Firth would be a tremendous M. So I think Matthew Vaughn could pick up the phone right there. And then also uh, Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill is in the upcoming Matthew Vaughn movie Argyle, and that's him right there. I don't know what happened with that haircut. That haircut's a choice. But Matthew Vaughn could, I mean, Matthew Vaughn could bring in uh, Henry Cavill either as James Bond himself or as potentially, so, someone tweeted me when I was, said this was going to be on today's, or when I tweeted the news earlier, uh, one of you said, well, maybe Henry Cavill could maybe even be a Bond villain. I would be happy for anything. I think that Henry Cavill was amazing in Mission Impossible. I think it was ridiculous that that franchise dropped him, although Christopher Nolan said maybe he has a brother or a twin brother, right? 
uh, or maybe they have a flashback, or maybe they'll find some way to bring him in. But I think that Henry Cavill would be a fantastic James Bond, particularly with uh, Matthew Vaughn directing. Quite frankly, as long as it's not Aaron Taylor Johnson, I will be very happy. Aaron Taylor Johnson's Craven. Good luck with that. That might work. I showed the Craven trailer to a friend of mine, and she was like, he is very attractive. And I was like, what? How does everybody see it but me? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, so we'll see what happens. But uh, so as a fan, I really like this casting. I think this is great casting. Uh, I mean, I, I, th I think uh, as for a director, I think that uh, Matthew Vaughn is a solid choice. But as a business person, I would not pick him. And the reason is, is that I saw some of you also saying this already, his movies have just not done well enough. Uh, the Kingsman movies, you know, they got a lot of attention, but they never really broke out. And then also they really kind of like degraded in quality as they went on. Uh, and then also his X-Men movie didn't really work out. Uh, I mean, the most successful that cast was was when Brian Singer took it over for Days of Future Past, quite frankly. Uh, so I just worry that Matthew Vaughn can't deliver a really successful, um, a really successful uh, James Bond movie, you know, box office wise. I'm not saying he can't deliver a quality one. You guys want a poll on who should be James Bond? Okay, I'll put one in. Who should be James Bond? Taryn Edgerton. I love Taryn Edgerton, but I don't know if he should be Bond. Oh, thank you, Dancing Dog, for gifting those memberships. Henry Cavill, Aaron Taylor Johnson, and then we'll do a fourth one. I only have four, or I would put in Richard Madden. Keep looking. <laughs> All right, so while you guys vote in that poll, uh, you can ask me any questions you would like about this story. That's right, Wandering Seth. Nolan doesn't really do fun, and if they're trying to significantly change the feel of the franchise after the Daniel Craig movies, he wouldn't be a good choice. Adriana says, but what about the Henry curse? I don't think there's a Henry Cavill curse, because Mission Impossible did so well. I think nobody likes working with Henry Cavill, and I think he's very difficult. And I think that I wouldn't trust him as a creative because, you know, the, especially the way he bailed on The Witcher. But I think people would see him. My choice, Danny, out of, I mean, I, I'm kind of leaning in the direction of Henry Cavill. But that's the thing. I mean, I think I would keep looking as a producer. But as a fan, I'm like, Matthew Vaughn and Henry Cavill, we're done. I'm excited. Maybe Taryn, maybe, I mean, maybe Taryn Edgerton can be a villain or something like that. Uh, but, oh, that's a good point. Who said that? SDA, that's a good point. Nolan is very bad at picking actresses and working with women. And Bond women are crucial. And so that's an excellent point. That's a very, very good point. C.K. Godoth says, I think we need a more fun-looking Bond. Henry Cavill looks fun. Colby says, I want a younger Bond. That's true. I did hear they wanted to go young because they wanted to be able to last for a long time. Evan, I think Emily Blunt, I mean, agree to disagree. She, I mean, I, she did get a lot of praise for her Oppenheimer role. I thought she did not look her best. Um, and I thought it was a poorly written role and I didn't like the role. Uh, but, it, you know, it's fine. Amar says, Grace, could Pedro Pascal be a good Bond? I think so, unless he is too overexposed. Um, I love Pedro Pascal, but I don't think he'd be a good Bond. I think he'd be, I'd love to see him get his own franchise or do something else. I mean, he has The Last of Us. He has his franchise. I'm very excited for him in the upcoming Gladiator movie. I have to tell you, I think Pedro Pascal is doing so well that he could just, he should just keep doing what he's doing. I think his team is building out his career very well. Natalie Sue says, David Tennant for M. You know, I think David Tennant for Q. Natalie, although he's already playing Q, kind of, on uh, Ahsoka. Paul Meskel, Daniel Lopez. I'm not feeling Paul Meskel, although I have yet to see him in something. I just see him, I just see pictures of him and people saying, Paul Meskel, and I'm like, nah. Oh, Silverscale says, what about a female Q? I would love it, but, you know, everybody would start complaining, which would be frustrating. All right, let's, when we get to 1,000 votes, I will close the poll. Yeah, Buzz, Josh O'Connor was my vote, was my choice at first from The Crown, who played young Prince Charles. 
or now King Charles. Uh, but after seeing him in Challengers, maybe not. Uh, no, Max, I don't think that Gal Gadot would be a good Bond girl. I think it's beneath her at this point. And again, she's not a very good actress. Wilmer, your first time live. I love it. Olivia Coleman as M is not a bad idea, Joe. I liked a female M. Well, I mean, Judy Dench. No one's going to complain. Nobody complained about Judy Dench. So maybe you could do a female Q. I would like to do that. I mean, they've had so many good Qs to date. I mean, why not take it in a different direction? Charlie Hunnam, mother of five dragons. You're, go home, you're drunk. I hate when people say that to me, so I'm sorry. But I mean, I did have that reaction to your comment. Leroy Cavill, you know, too big for Bond physically? Or do you think like too big is, I mean, he's, he could, he'll take whatever work he can get at this point. Yeah, Bweezy Bird, we saw that One Piece was renewed. We talked about it at the very top of the stream. Adrian, I mean, I don't know if Kingsman 3 is happening. There might have been discussions about it, and Taron Edgerton might have said that. But, I mean, if Matthew Vaughn lands this movie, they're not making Kingsman 3. I mean, until they start casting, and until the thing starts actually moving forward, you never know for sure if it's going to happen. Which is a pretty good segue to move into Lando. But let's just end the poll in just a minute. Just need 25 more, 23 more, 20. Almost done, just a few more votes. Uh, Sidhu says, Vaughn's done Kingsman and Argyle, so how will he make Bond different? Love Matthew Vaughn, but not convinced here. That's an excellent point. I think they're just hoping maybe, oh, I love you too, Mother of Five Dragons. I think they're just hoping on, on, on a lot of people have seen those other films, and I think that's a safe bet. <laughs> so that might be what they decide. No visionary. I think Alexander Skarsgård's a little too TV at this point, I'm afraid. Oh, we hit 1,000 votes. Okay. Here it comes. Henry Cavill, 42%, but 37% right behind that think keep looking. 12% want Taron Edgerton, and only 7% want Aaron Taylor Johnson. So I think there are still, as you can see, Henry Cavill still has a lot of fans, which is great. Um, I still think he's a force that could be wielded correctly. Uh, but overall, it seems keep looking. All right, let's go on to the next story. Hold on. Story number two. Here it goes. Boop. All right. Lando. Lando in the news. Lando Cal Calrissian. So uh, the headline, when I first saw the headline, I thought, this is great. Because I feel like uh, many of us have felt that a lot of the recent, uh, oh, Will Poulter is Bond. I don't think is Bond, but Will Poulter is the, on the cusp of something big, Rashad. He's on the cusp of something big, especially after I saw him in Dope Sick and um, The Bear Season 2. He's just poised for, for something big. All right, so anyway, when I saw the Lando headline, I was very happy because I think a lot of us have felt a lot of the Disney Plus series play like drawn-out movies. Like I saw a couple of people when they were talking about Ahsoka after Episode 5 being like, this would have been a great two-and-a-half-hour movie instead of like, you know, basically a seven-hour, six-hour uh, bunch of episodes. And I agree with that. I agree. I think these things, you know, the pacing, Disney really needs to master their pacing. So I thought, oh, this is great. I'm so happy they're doing a Disney Plus movie. But then I read the actual article, and this is coming from Donald Glover's brother, Stephen, who he works with a lot creatively. And Stephen was doing a podcast, which he can do because he's not, a, isn't he a member of the Writers Guild? So he really technically can't. I guess he could do uh, an interview. I guess he could do an interview uh, just to promote nothing, like just to talk about himself, but eh, it's sketchy. Uh, Donald Glover, of course, is not saying anything. But Stephen said, oh, we're doing a movie. He said, we're gonna, we've switched it to a movie. And he, I don't think he actually said that it was going to be in theaters. It seems to me like something that like the trades or everybody else leaped, leapt to. And I don't know if maybe, if even if that's what Stephen Glover thinks, I don't know if Stephen Glover like, got the mis misread it, okay? Or like this is him trying to make this a movie by pitching it and saying it. And then when, you know, they everybody online says it's such a great idea, he goes to Disney and says, see? But I would be shocked if they released a Lando movie in theaters. That seems so stupid to me. 
That seems absolutely ridiculous to do a Lando movie in theaters. We'll make it a poll in a second. I, I just think, uh, no, Donald Glover, uh, Brendan, is the actor where Stephen Glover is his collaborator who is the person who made this comment. So, uh, so anyway, uh, I think that it would be absolutely ridiculous to, to make this a, a movie in theaters. And it, it wasn't announced at Star Wars Celebration, and I think, but I think that a Disney Plus movie is a really good idea. I think it would be great for Disney Plus to start doing more Disney Plus Marvel and Star Wars movies and specials rather than these series that are drawn out and just make everybody angry. Uh, so let me put a poll here about a Lando. How would you like to see Lando return? How, one second, how, oh, how would you like to see Lando return? So movie in theaters, movie on Disney, Disney Plus, then series on Disney Plus, and then I do not, I would not care for him to return. He should not return, we'll do that. Okay, all right, so you can vote in that poll. I wouldn't be against Donald Glover reprising the role for a Disney Plus movie. I mean, I have very specific requirements. Uh, I thought, you know, some people said, wouldn't it be great if Alden Ehrenreich came back as Han Solo? Wouldn't mind that. I thought Alden Ehrenreich actually was a pretty good Han Solo, particularly when they got to the end of the movie. He really started to seem like Han Solo, so that's a shame that he never really got to prove himself. Uh, so I think that wouldn't be a bad idea. Although I do see, when I looked at the comments in the trades, I do see the Star Wars fandom starting to fracture, like they do with DC a little bit, which makes me nervous. Uh, a lot of people in the comments were like, I don't care about it if it's not from Dave Filoni. And then some other people were like, I don't care about it if it's not from uh, Tony Gilroy. Hey, Travis, thank you. And that to me seems like a really a bad development, you know, to start having these Star Wars fraction, uh, factions where people are only interested in specific content. The idea is you should want all of the Star Wars content. Although I would agree, thank you, Joe, I would agree that it would be great to move on to new stories. I think that continually rehashing all these old characters and talking about uh, you know, what happened to their kids? What happened to them? What, do, what don't you know about these characters you've had around for decades? I'm getting really tired of it. Uh, and even the new characters in the Disney, the new Disney trilogy mimicked the original characters to a ridiculous degree. Ah, Connor, I'm glad you got another gifted membership. That's awesome. But yeah, to me, it's just, it's, you know, like Kylo Ren was like, wanted to be Darth Vader. He's a Darth Vader fanboy. I think that Rey was a lot like Luke Skywalker. And you know, then they made uh, Luke Skywalker the new Obi-Wan. And it's just, it's too much. And I would just really like, that's why Mando, I think, worked so well. Even though, of course, they had a baby Yoda. Uh, so, so, uh, let's see here. Uh, Saad says, why, my reaction is to switch to a movie was, okay, why? Well, I think you mean why make it in the first place, right? Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think Mando worked because Mando was a new character and he met other new characters. And even though it was baby Yoda, it wasn't Yoda as a baby, it was also a new character. And so that was really cool. And baby Yoda's adorable. But so I, so I think that's why that worked so well. Yeah, David, my Ahsoka breakdown will come tomorrow. I loved baby Yoda, Will. I still love baby Yoda. All right, let me close the poll. And we'll move on to, uh, oh, does anyone have any questions about this? Uh, the poll said 42% don't want him to return. Woo, I would not make this. Uh, a movie on Disney Plus is then 35%, whereas only 11% want a movie in theaters and only 10% want a whole nother series. Yeah, I mean, I just don't think there's enough interest for Lando to return for a whole series. Ben 10 says, Star Wars without Skywalker, the Skywalker story feels pretty strange. Maybe the franchise uh, had its time. I don't, is that what you mean? I don't know. I mean, I told you I really liked Mando at the beginning. And I still kind of like Mando because I kind of got, got into the Filoni-verse. But I didn't drink the Filoni tea, which is, I think, one of the reasons I didn't enjoy Episode 5 as much as I liked Episode 4, quite frankly. 
Yeah, Bashenga, I don't know what happened to the Star Wars timeline they proposed. Maybe when the Acolyte comes out, it'll start to come more into effect. Oh, Cry Deluxe, I'm so glad you caught alive. Thank you, that's a very nice thing to say. Uh, Ditto says, Lando is my favorite Star Wars character, but I've had enough of Star Wars. Yeah, the, 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 the burnout is real. I think Disney burned out Marvel and they burned out their Star Wars fandom, which is shocking. You know, cool, Kev, it's interesting you didn't like episode five because some people got pretty upset with me. Danny loved it. That's great. Ryan says, any news coming out of Lucasfilm? Uh, can't, believe, uh, can't be believed at this point. How many projects have been announced and not come to fruition? Oh, I would agree with that. Again, until it starts casting, until they start hiring, you know, crew, I would not necessarily think that they are going to have it again. Oh, hey, Danielle. Says, hi, Grace. You're the best as always. I mentioned it several streams ago until we past the rise of Skywalker in the timeline, I'm not interested. Oh, that's, that's a, that's a good, good, Jason, thank you for gifting a membership. That's a good way to put it, Danielle, to just move for, past this whole area and just go into new stories. But then, you know, how do they keep the Empire Rebel situation? I mean, I've, I, I like some of this stuff, but it's just, they're dividing the audience and it just isn't the, the big grand audience that's into the same story as it was before. Uh, Travis says Lando comes back in Solo 2. They're not going to make a Solo 2, Travis, I'm afraid. I don't think that's going to happen. Katie Lady says the audience divided themselves. Oh, that's very poetic. Sadie says all I want is Acolyte. Is it even, uh, what do you mean, DTG for viewing? What does that mean? Uh, But it will come out. They actually, they filmed the Acolyte. We've seen some pictures. But, like, does anybody here want to watch Skeleton Crew, that Jude Law kids show about, like, little kids who are Force-sensitive? I don't know. Hey, Danny, that's an adorable little emoji you picked there. So cute. A super sticker. Oh, good to go. Thank you, William. Isaiah wants to watch Skeleton Crew, but it seems like not many of you do. Yeah, David, Skeleton Crew is a thing. They filmed it. They have to release it. It is Stranger Things in Space, Dre Films. That's right. Rihanna says, nope, 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 nope. Hey, O&W, I'm glad you made the stream. I do a poll, but I think it's time. I think we're ready to move on to the next story. Big League Chew says, Grace, what was your thoughts on the latest Ahsoka episode? I respected the artistry of the first half of it, but then I thought it was too slow for the second half. And I know a lot of you, well, we'll talk about it in the breakdown tomorrow, but I know a lot of people are like, she's Ahsoka the White, it's just like Gandalf. But I gotta tell you, oh, Saud, that's so generous of you, thank you. But I have to tell you, I'm, I'm not a big like Lord of the Rings fan. So like, I'm not like, ooh, it's just like Gandalf the White. I'm like, oh yeah, I guess it is. So I mean, that's like a big difference there. Look at all these people getting memberships. You get a membership, you get a membership, you get a membership. And that's all thanks to Saud Althani. So that's awesome. Uh, All right, let's move on to the third story and then we can do Ask Me Anything. So for the third one, we always do the boom, baby. Boy, I was scraping the bottom of the barrel for this story. One Piece news came out too late, I'm afraid. Uh, or else, of course, I would have added that instead. Uh, and then I was saving, I'm saving Harley Quinn for tomorrow because I wanted to give you guys enough time to watch it. Uh, all right, so, oh, and look at you. You were just talking as a subscriber, and now you're a member. See, YouTube saw your engagement and gave you a membership. That's awesome. That's so cool. Uh, hey, Mandy. Good to see you again. All right, so Frasier, uh, I, this trailer, they released the trailer finally for the new season of uh, the new Frasier. They're bringing back Frasier on Paramount Plus because, you know, it's the nostalgia kick, but for TV, it hasn't really worked out really for anybody. Will and Grace came back a little bit, didn't quite work out. Uh, but this is coming back starting on October 12th. They're going to drop two episodes on Paramount Plus and then a new episode every Thursday until they hit 10 episodes. And that's funny that it's dropping on Thursdays because that's, of course, the night 
that Frasier, of course, and Cheers originally aired on NBC's Must See TV. What a lineup that was. It was so historic. Nothing has ever been repeated in the same way. I think HBO Sundays are what like NBC Thursdays used to be. It was incredible. Ah, T-Rex, you're so cute. Pick me, YouTube God. That's a cute comment. Uh, but by leaving a comment, T-Rex, you're helping yourself. That's really cute. Uh, I'm sending good vibes your way, T-Rex. I hope you get a gifted membership. All right, so I love Frasier. Frasier is a fantastic show. Uh, I bet this will do very well with like the only murders in only murders in the building crowd. And I rewatched Frasier uh, during the pandemic, and I thought it was fantastic all over again. The last season, the last two seasons are not so great. Uh, it's that classic thing where like the will they or won't they couple if they do get together, it kind of hurts the show a little bit. But then you know you can't keep them apart for that long, or it starts to become ridiculous. So. But, I, oh, Mr. F, thank you for gifting a membership. But I will say, you know, I think it was largely, largely also the writing. Uh, but, the, but the writing on Frasier was really incredible. I mean, that was one of the most, the best things that, were, that really made it stand out. So for this new, sh this new uh, reiteration, he's back to Boston. So he started out in Boston on Cheers as a supporting character. Then they did a spinoff and moved him to Seattle, totally reinvented the show around him. It was genius. And now he's going to go back to Boston. So this is like supposed to be another chapter. And I think that kind of works. Another chapter in Frasier's life, you know, like many years later. Uh, Mr. F tried to get that to T-Rex. That's so cute. You guys, you guys are making, you're, you know, so kind. You guys are, are, are bursting the hearts, pulling on the heartstrings. Uh, so anyway, he goes back to uh, Boston to be near his son, Freddie, who despite all the previous depictions has actually ended up growing up to be much like his grandfather, who of course was a policeman, but now Freddie is a firefighter. So they're trying to keep that blue collar, uh, starched collar. I, I like that. I like saying it that way. Blue collar versus starched col collar kind of clash, you know. Oh, uh, thank you, Whelm. That's very generous of you. But you didn't hit T-Rex either. But congrats to the people who did get memberships. Writer boy, Saud Althani, 50 memberships. That's extremely generous of you. That's extremely generous that you did that. That's very kind. I don't know if T-Rex is going to get one, but a lot of deserving people are going to get one. Uh, that's really kind of you. And look at Boab, already gifted five memberships this stream. Back in with 10. Oh, wow. You guys are throwing, oh, look. Mike Jones did 10 memberships. Oh, T-Rex, I don't know if you're going to get one, but I hope you're feeling the love. And that's, oh, that's just incredible. So many memberships. Look at all these people getting, uh, you'll be able to participate in the live streams for the next month. Ah, oh, that's really warms the heart. You guys are so nice. Really, really generous. I uh, love Writer Boy threw another one on the pile. Big League Chew put in 10 more. T-Rex got it. You got him. You got T-Rex. Oh, let me see if I can see it. Oh, that is so funny. Oh, I love these moments that only the live stream can create. That is so, oh, CJ, thank you for putting one in. That is just the cutest thing I've ever seen. Ah, oh, Sal, that's so kind of you. T-Rex, did you get a membership? Let me see you in green. Let me see you in green with your blue badge. That is just so great. Justin Atkins put in five memberships. I want to make sure I thank everybody. Did T-Rex write a comment? I don't see it. Oh, yes. There you are, T-Rex. Oh, and T-Rex was a member before. So coming in hot with a, with a bronze badge for two months. Oh, wow. Yay. Well, that's great. That was just so great. I know we interrupted the story, but that was totally worth it. That was just so cool to see. Did someone just gift more memberships? No, they're coming in still. That was so great. All right, so T-Rex, ah, you, 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 spoke to the, you spoke to your fellow BTT uh, family. Oh, I love it, family, as uh, Vin Diesel says. Oh, Wandering Seth, what a kind thing to say. Yeah, it's been tough with the strikes, but, you know, I support the writers and the actors, so I'm not going to complain about it. Or, you know, some people are like, oh, end the strikes already. But no, I don't want them to end till these people get what they are owed.
but um, it's it's it is hurting. But it, also, I can't complain about it too much because it's hurting other people so much more. Uh, and so it's really tough out there. By the way, we talked about Drew Barrymore the other day being a scab and inspiring other people. Bill Maher also became a scab today, uh, today announced that he was going to scab. It's really horrible. Oh, yeah, back to this Frasier show. So, yeah, I agree with everybody. If Niles isn't on the show, who cares? I mean, I really agree with that. Not to say that I won't watch it. I'll try the first two episodes. And you know what? It's really slow right now. So I could see myself on a Thursday when I need something to watch. Like right now, I've gone back to rewatch Will and Grace. Oh, I ready. Gifted 10 memberships. Thank you. Like right now, when I need like something quick to watch, I'm watching Will and Grace. So that's what I've been doing. But I'll throw uh, a new Frasier on the pile, you know, once in a while if I need something short. Especially because I have to binge things. I'm sitting on a lot of screeners right now. Seattle Laundered, 20 memberships. Oh, the generosity today is so moving. Uh, yeah, Pastor Madeline, the reason Marty can't return is because that actor John Mahoney unfortunately passed away. Uh, very sad. Um, Hulu has so many great uh, sitcoms on it. If you're looking for stuff to watch, they have... Uh, so I, during, the, during the pandemic, I rewatched Friends because I was like... Who rewatches sitcoms? I never understood that. But then during the pandemic, it was like, I'll do it. And I was like, oh, this is amazing. I can see why people do this. So I watched Big Bang Theory, uh, Friends, uh, Seinfeld, and Frasier. It was great. I really had a good time. And Golden Girls. And Golden Girls. The pandemic was long, as you know. I should have done Parks and Rec. You're right, Shahar. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was great. I had a very good time. Uh, and so uh, now I'm kind of doing that with Will and Grace. Because also I watched Smartless, and I, I almost, I could have watched Arrested Development, I guess. But I was like, oh, I'd love to see some more Sean Hayes. Because they were talking a lot about Will and Grace. So I was like, oh, I'll watch some Will and Grace. So uh, Hulu, they're, it's all on Hulu. Bumblebee, thank you for gifting five memberships. Uh, but anyway, this uh, Frasier show will be on Paramount+. Plus. Now I will say, based on the trailer that came out today, I had a couple of issues with it, which I'll share here. SMR Goose, I'm not sure how many memberships have been gifted this stream, but it's definitely one of the top ones. The most month ever for uh, gifted memberships, which was over 1,000 gifted memberships, was June. In June of this year, over 1,000 memberships were gifted that month, and it was incredible. It was a beautiful thing to see. That's why I gift memberships at the start of every week, to match your generosity. Uh, but so it's, it's, that's fantastic. That's so kind of you. Um, but so with this trailer... I felt that the lighting was off. It looked like NBC's sitcoms from back in the day had like a filmic cinema look to them. They had like a grain. They had like better lighting that created depth. I don't like these very bright lit sitcoms that seem very flat and cheap. And so I kind of feel like that's what uh, the new Frasier looks like. Uh, also, some of the characters seem like stock characters. Oh, I'll do a poll about Frasier. Are you going to watch... New Frasier. We'll do, I'll try it. Seattle Law Nerd again. Wow, needed to send some love and light this week to one of my favorite reporters. Seattle Law Nerd, that is just so generous of you and means so much. That's just really kind of you. And good vibes to you and with the stuff that you're working on. Doing the law in Seattle, obviously. Uh, and then uh, San Sana says, Grace, you liked my pink top for Barbie? Thank you so much. I'm so glad you got a membership. That's so awesome. That's so great. I'm, I love seeing memberships go to great people who are happy to get them. Every time I see somebody be happy they joined in, it makes me really happy. So are you going to watch the new Frasier? I'll try it. Not without Niles. I kind of feel that way. And then not a Frasier fan. I don't want to put too many options in because I think you guys are right. Sometimes that dilutes the poll. So David Hyde Pierce said he didn't want to do it, but he said he wasn't even asked, which I find very odd. I think maybe Kelsey Grammer wanted to be the star, but uh, I think he should have been like, what is it going to take, David Hyde Pierce, to get you to come back as Niles, quite frankly. Oh, John Teal, you're watching Pretty Little Liars? That's awesome. I've never seen that show.
Yeah, that's right, Paul. David Hyde Pierce is a comedic genius. You know, it's funny you say he's 75% of Frasier. I would say he's crucial to Frasier's success. But when I rewatch these sitcoms, I really could really more appreciate the craftsmanship, like the writing and the directing, but also the supporting cast. Uh, and also maybe people I didn't realize how much they contributed the first time around, but I could see that when I watched it again. Like Elaine, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, when you rewatch uh, Seinfeld, you can see she was just so important, such an important building block to that show. And I would say that Kelsey Grammer was a really important foil for David Hyde Pierce. And his line delivery, Kelsey Grammer, is sensational. In fact, Kelsey Grammer, I think, based on this trailer, is still at the top of his game playing the character. But I don't know if he has great actors to work off of for the spinoff. That's the problem. I feel like they're just stock casting, you know, like from central casting. There's no actors there that are getting me excited, either because I'm familiar from them, of the, with them from other projects or um, because, you know, they, they really pop on screen. You don't even know what Frasier is, Lucas? That's hilarious. Frasier was one of the most successful sitcoms of all time and won so many Emmys. That's right, SMR Goose. TV writing is not as good as it once was, which is why I think partially the sitcom failed. Oh, that's right, KB Harmon. Daphne and Roz were also great. Uh, Daphne is also not supposedly coming back because I guess they'd be like, well, then where's Niles? But Roz will return to this show for a guest spot. Oh, yeah, of course, everybody loved Eddie. Uh, KO also never even heard of Frasier. That's funny. Uh, and then B.B. Newworth, of course, will also show up because she's Freddie's mom. That's right, Daniel. Kelsey Grammer took a lot of hits from Camille Grammer being on uh, Real Housewives. And I always felt that he encouraged her to be on Real Housewives so that she would have an income and could prove she was working because he was getting ready to divorce her. Uh, sometimes guys will do that. When they want to divorce their wife and she's not doing anything, they kind of push them to go and do something so that they can then say, what are you talking about? She has a stream of income. She's okay. Look at Dwayne. Dwayne Henry got a membership. I love it. Oh, yeah, that's right, Prometheus. BB, his manager. She, she was just in Werewolf by Night. She could totally come back. All right, let's see what the votes are. And then we'll do the Ask Me Anything portion of the stream. All right, are you going to watch new Frasier? Not a Frasier fan, 63%. Oh, not looking good for Paramount Plus. 26% will try it, but 10% say not without Niles. Yeah, if I, if, you know, if I wasn't so desperate for something to watch for half an hour, I would agree with the no, not without Niles. But I think I'm going to try it. Again, I don't know if I'll watch the whole thing, but I'll certainly try the first two episodes. I mean, come on, October 12th when that rolls around, although something else drops then. Oh yeah, the, I, got, I just got these screeners. The Fall of House of Usher comes out that day. So that's going to be rough. Lou says, I never watched Frasier either. I just know it's pretty famous in the LGBT community for some reason. That's probably because of the very prominent LGBT actors on the show. David Hyde Pierce is, of course, LGBT. But some of you might not know that John Mahoney, I believe, was also LGBT, who played Marty. Uh, so that was uh, a really big part of the history of that show. Uh, so I think that that's part of it. Uh, all right, let's do the Ask Me Anything. Amar, uh, Amar says, Grace, I recently moved to London from Pakistan all alone to pursue my career, and I'm only 17. What a moving story. First of all, congratulations, because so many people try and make that journey and don't succeed, so I'm so glad you got there. And said, it's been tough and scary, but your live streams in a weird way really help cure my homesickness. Oh, I'm so glad that I can help at all. That's very exciting, Amar. What you did is very brave. And you should feel really good about that. Just remember what you're accomplishing. And just the, the feat alone to even get there is so exciting. And um, that's really great. I, I think this is very cool. Think of yourself. You know what sometimes helps? And I know people who do this, and it's good advice. Sometimes think of yourself as a character in a movie or a novel and then just kind of think about, you know, oh yeah, this is this part of my story. And then sometimes you can also, if you're trying to push yourself to do something, you should say, imagine how great this would be in my movie or novel about myself, right? Like I got to do this. Like once I was on a family vacation and we were celebrating my mother's birthday and we were trying to decide we were in Venice. Okay, I'll just tell you the story. We were in Venice and we'd gone to dinner 
We got to go to uh, Cipriani, which was uh, really a cool experience, although there were very few people in there, which I thought was weird. But it was really cool, and then we were like, you had to take a boat to get there. Uh, but we were like, what should we do now? Should we go home or like go back to the hotel or should we do something else? And I remember someone in my family was like, the tale of mom's birthday will not end with us just going home to the hotel from the restaurant. So we took another boat to a casino and it ended up being like a, a party night for like college or high school students, which made it extra hilarious. So it ended up feeling like we were like at a bat mitzvah. <laughs> But we ended up at this casino really late at night, but we were like, no, this is how the story has to go. We, like, we have to make sure the story has a good ending. So that's always something you can do. So Amar, I hope that bit of advice can also help you a little bit, you know, just to kind of make it more fun and to kind of push yourself when you need something like that. That's right, Taylor, the membership does last 30 days. Okay, so I told that story and now we'll do the Q&A. Hold on. All right, it's 5.06. You can ask me anything you'd like till 5.16. Oh, Ra Ra Robbie, I'm glad you think my, or Rabbi, I'm glad you think my advice was good. You know, I always get nervous giving advice. Narwhal says, any Disney animation tea? Well, I spilled it the other day a little bit when I said Tiana wasn't going to come out until 2025, the animated show. Uh, say, say I, the tea, I had tea for you right there with the, uh, with the Va Matthew Vaughn stuff. John Teal says, any updates on Jonathan Majors? Well, you know, some people believe this video that he has out right now where he stops a fight between two high school girls, and some don't. I don't believe it. I think it looks staged to me, but, you know, and I also, I don't understand what the point of it is. I don't know how he would think that would influence anything in the case that he has. That's, I think it's supposed to go to court very soon, finally. Uh, so I just, you know. See, I, I am excited for Castlevania Nocturne. I have those screeners. I got to go through all my screeners and see when the uh, embargoes are. I have Gen V screeners, which I'm very interested in. Zeke the Wise, my day is good, especially now that we're having such a fun live stream. You guys always pep me up. Toon Dude 19 says, Grace, did you see the churn numbers for all the streaming services? I didn't. I was looking for that. I saw that Max was the most churned, which I thought was hilarious. Uh, and they said just Variety with no link to the article. And I was like, where is it? And I couldn't find it on Variety's site. So I was a little annoyed. It might have been a Variety Plus article. So. Oh, and I'm not planning to go to, uh, oh, the New York Film Festival? I missed the stupid press embargo, press sign update, even though you guys told me about it. I forgot. I just missed it. So I'm throwing myself on the mercy of uh, Lincoln Center, and they might be able to get me to be into some screenings. I'm also working some of my publicity connections. So I, I'm hoping I can get into some of the screenings I want to see. Rihanna says, are you excited for Netflix's Avatar The Last Airbender? Yeah, I kind of am, actually. I mean, let's see it. I'm very excited. I don't know how many people are still Avatar fans, to be honest with you. I worry it might be like the Filoni-verse. Like, they're loud on social media, but they actually are not big in numbers. Marco, you can do Super Chats now. Super Chat away. Bobby uh, Rosa says, which X-Men rumored character are you most excited to see come back in Deadpool 3? I'd really love to see James Marsden prove himself right as Cyclops. I'd love to see him get one right. Happy birthday, duck! Happy birthday, duck! Uh, Toon Dude 19 says, oh, I already answered that. Mish says, will the Filoni movie be about defeating Thrawn and Rebels characters, and will Pedro be in the movie? New story? Set after the original or sequel trilogy? I, I mean, I haven't heard anything about it, Mish, from my sources, but I suspect it's going to tie up all of his stuff. I think it's going to lead, of, lead off of the stories that he's, whatever he's building now, quite frankly. Oh, Amar, I'm so glad that that advice was helpful. I'm so glad. David says, thoughts on Werewolf by Night coming out on Disney Plus in color. I love to use the British spelling, David. Uh, you know, I got to tell you, I saw it's also going to be on Hulu. 
you know, during Halloween, I don't have a lot to watch. You know, I told you I watch like uh, Ichabod and, Mis you, know, uh, you know, the Headless Horseman animated thing on Disney. But, I, you know, I've watched that a lot already. So, I, I mean, I don't have a lot to watch on Halloween. And I kind of am Hocus pocus out because Hocus Pocus 2 was okay, but it kind of, you know, uh, I'm kind of like, I'm done. So, you know, maybe I'll watch that again. Catalan says, any tea on the Mary and George series release date? I'm not sure what that is. I'm sorry. Oh, look at you guys all wishing Duck happy birthday. Oh, Seattle Law Nerd, another, uh, another uh, donation. Aqu Aquaman 2 projection, I say 500 million. I got to tell you, Seattle Law Nerd, I say maybe even a little lower than that. I think maybe not as low as The Flash, but I could see it coming in under five. Uh, Carmelo, what a great name, has been a silent member for a while, finally got a live stream, just wanted to say thanks for all your amazing content. Ah, uh, look, you know, you don't, you don't chat very often, but you're, you're a ruby, the highest badge you can be. I'm so glad you said hi. Oh, Beth, very generous. Uh, Beth says, what do people in the business do for healthcare coverage? Is it covered by the union? I work in healthcare personally, been watching you for a decade. Ah, yay, Beth, thanks for sticking with me. I'm still sad you don't have a million subscribers. Eh, you know, I gotta tell you, whenever I say something that some people don't like, it's, it's, you know, it's tough, but you know, I'm in the business of opinions, so I'm just gonna keep going. But that's very kind of you to say, Beth, that you're very, very sweet. Um, I, if, if, as to your question, as for healthcare coverage, Yes, the unions do provide health care coverage. However, the problem is, is that you have to earn a certain amount of money in a year to qualify for health care coverage from the union. And most people in SAG don't even make enough money to qualify for health care. So a lot of them don't have health care, at least not through acting, maybe through their, whatever job they're using to support themselves. Uh, and then sometimes you can get health care uh, through the studio, maybe if you're actually an employee. Uh, but I think for a lot of this stuff, you got to go and you got to get um, like through Obama. You know, that's what Obamacare was supposed to give some deals. I know that some people I know buy in. Uh, California has better buy-ins than New York State. New York State has horrible state plans uh, for individuals. Uh, but California has excellent individual plans. Uh, so I know a number of people who are self-employed, who are writers and actors, who are able to buy their own health insurance plan uh, through something like Blue Cross Blue Shield, through the state. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Tarak, I missed your first ever super chat. Let me go see if I can find it. Bob said, hi, Grace, did you watch Who is Aaron Carter? I'm afraid not because I wasn't reviewing it. Uh, John Teal says, Grace, which element would you pick to be as a bender? Metal bender! No question. I'm a big Toph fan. And whatever her daughter's name was, I forgot it. Oh, I missed a couple of these. Hold on, I'm going back. Brody Rule says, does the fact that there's no other huge holiday release this year bear well for Aquaman 2? Well, not necessarily. I think that James Gunn really undercut these movies, and I think the movie kind of undercuts itself as well a little bit with the trailer. Uh, but you know, there's Willy Wonka coming out still, right? So I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. Holly Jervis says, watching with my besties, Kelly and Rachel, they love you. Oh, hey, I love that you're all watched together. She loves watching you because uh, <laughs> she's lazy at the moment. Well, hello to all of you. I'm glad, you know, you're your own Gotham City sirens there. Big League Chew says, Grace, how soon do you feel production will resume once the strikes end? It would immediately, on the things that are paused, they would immediately move to get back into production. Britt says, Marco and Oscar went to the SAG protest. Are they engineering, endangering their career by getting the studios mad? Or does this help them? I think it's important to show up. You know, I think it's important for your fellow actors if you ever want to work in the business again. You need to have been there. People are not going to forget. DP Sleep says, I always thought it would have been really cool if instead of the Raylo trilogy, we got an Ahsoka versus Starkiller trilogy. Uniting the animation games movie fans. It would have been huge if done right. I don't know about Ahsoka, especially with Rosario Dawson playing her, but let's see if she gets a little more energy. But yeah, I, I would, I think, but I don't know. I got to tell you, I don't think the Filoni verse is as popular as, you know, some of the, its fans would hope. 
Toon Dude 19 says, Grace, have you heard any tea on the next Lynn uh, Miranda animated film? Swear to, it's been very quiet. No, I'm afraid I haven't heard anything about that. All right, let me go back and see if I missed something else. John Till says, I love the Avatar, The Last Airbender, and Korra. Yeah, I was, that was huge. I used to cover that. It was a big deal when that show was coming out, but it was a while ago. Buzz says, hi, Grace. Would you mind wishing Patrick happy birthday for the 15th of September? I hope he loves his new Nintendo Luigi hair clips. Love, Connor. Oh, wow. Happy birthday, Patrick. That's tomorrow. Uh, and it sounds like you got a pretty cool gift from Connor. Oh, there it is, Tag. Your first ever Super Chat. Thoughts on Heartstopper Season 2, past episode 2. Show is so important to the LGBT people like myself. I need your opinion on it. Must finish if you haven't. I'll try, Tad. But, you know, the further along we get, the harder it is for me to go back and, and, and finish it. Because I have so many other screeners. I told you I have a very big pile of screeners to watch to do reviews. Let's see here. Ah, oh, all these birthdays, wishes for Duck. Happy birthday, Duck. Duck, 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 Duck. Happy birthday! Whelm says, I saw comments on that streaming churn story. The amount of people totally unaware of just how much quality content exists on Apple TV saddens me. Yeah, it is. It's very sad. There are trailers don't even do well because people are like, I'm not going to go on Apple TV. Uh, Christopher, I did see this, the trailer for Henry Sugar and I got invited to a screening for it, but I actually rescinded my RSVP because it's only 39 minutes. I'm like, what am I going to do with that? Uh, Buck's Basement says, One Piece just got renewed. Woohoo! Jump on board the pirate ship, Grace. We are going to meet the next Baby Yoda merch uh, in season two with Tony Tony Chopper. Is that that snail with a mouth? I don't know how I felt about that. Uh, maybe I'll check it out. I mean, if they're doing more, but I don't know. I don't really know if it's for me. Mandy said, Grace, what is your favorite animated movie from Disney Studios? I personally love Hercules cinematography and song so much. I'm also a huge Greek mythology fan. Me too, Mandy. That's why, probably why you like Percy Jackson so much too. I have to tell you that I love all the Disney animated movies, but I have a special place in my heart for Sleeping Beauty. That's my favorite one. I'm going back here because I miss Super Chats. Oh, I can't go back any further. Oh, Carmelo, thank you for gifting a membership. Okay, I'm going back. Pen 10 says, Grace, what is it about Wednesday that made it such a big success in your opinion? I personally loved it, but I never got what made it so successful. Lots of love from Peru. Ah, oh, Mandy again, I love it. Uh, I, think, I think that it was really charming. I think it was a good family show, but also adults could enjoy it. So it didn't seem like it was for kids. I thought it was surprisingly wholesome. And I thought that uh, Jenna Ortega just was so perfectly cast as Wednesday. I mean, she just really popped in that role. Ah, thanks, Duck. I'm glad you got everyone's birthday wishes. Let's see here. Ah, Hander, thank you. Da -da -da. Trying to go back, see if I missed anything. We're over time. Jay Quitter says, if Disney moves forward with the villain's land, which villain would you like an attraction based on? Ooh, that's a great question. I'd like a villain's stage show. I would like a villain's restaurant. As for a ride, you know, maybe a dark ride where they're all working together or something. I feel like Disney is not doing a good enough job um, diversifying the types of rides that they're making. I think to some degree they're all starting to feel the same. Like, uh, Slinky Dog Dash and Tron are very similar, right? Uh, I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy is also a little bit like that, but it's so nuts from what I hear that that's even, it's, so it's a little bit different. But then the trackless ride to, rides to me feel very similar. Uh, like Mickey's Runaway Railway, Ratatouille, uh, Rise of Sky, uh, Rise of the Resistance. So I would like them to maybe go back to maybe like doing some more dark rides, some other kinds of things. Fernando says, Grace, what are your box office predictions for the Marvels and Wish? I thought that the Marvels new poster looked really great. I think Wish is going to flop. I think the Marvels is going to do moderate. John Teal said, Toph had two daughters, and she's not Toph, she's Melon Lord. I don't remember that she had another daughter. I, don't, I, I guess I'll have to go back and watch Korra. Uh, let's see here. I think, uh, oh, Stephen says, should WGA revoke Bill Mayer's membership, Bill Maher? Uh, maybe. They got to start doing something. This, we're very disappointed in you, isn't working. 
Daniel says, what do you think of the idea of putting James Bond as a period piece? No, I wouldn't do that. I didn't think it worked for Matthew Vaughn's X-Men, quite frankly. Wade says, which films will make more? Aquaman 2 or the Marvels? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I think they're both going to be, they're both going to underperform. No, Ike and Ike, you can comment too. Danny says, hey, Grace, have you watched classic shows like The Wire or The Sopranos? I never saw The Wire, unfortunately, but during the pandemic, I did go and watch The Sopranos finally, and I loved it. Ahsoka fan 23 says, hi, Grace, love the outfit. Thank you. I know you didn't like the latest Ahsoka episode, but what did you think of Dawson's performance? Honestly thought she was very good, especially now that she's more upbeat. Yeah, I wouldn't say she's bad, but I just don't think she's exciting. And I think she continues to be way too slow with her action sequences. Ariana Greenblatt was much faster, and I think it made a very big difference. Oh, Scotty and Skies, I'm glad you liked my Aquaman reaction. My breakdown, hopefully I'll, I'll get it up tonight. Starry says, I know you said previously that you didn't care for the new Wanda comic. Has your mind changed at all? No, I just read it last night, the new Loki one. I thought it was not good. The art's not great. I don't like that comic. I think I'm pretty caught up. Let me do a few more questions from subscribers since they can't always um, answer. Boeb says, hey, Grace, Anakin versus Ahsoka brought me to tears. That was pretty incredible. But we'll talk about that stuff tomorrow. I'll watch this. Have you read Dark Knights of Steel? I did. That's the, the medieval DC comic. I liked that one quite a bit. I usually like Tom Taylor. Uh, even though Tom King is sometimes annoying, I like his work, too, for the most part. Okay. Tundu19 says, Grace, if we go into October, will we have another round of movie pu pushback dates? Probably with the strikes? You might. And then Jay King says, hey, Grace, random question, but how do you find the willpower to quit sugar? I'm trying, but it's so hard. Well, I think once you start seeing results, that really helps. So just force yourself to do it for a week or two, and then I think you'll start to see results, and then you'll be like, okay, this is working. I'm going to keep doing it. And I think you have to cheat once a week, or you'll go nuts. You'll go insane if you don't cheat once a week. So once a week, treat yourself to something, but that's it. Let's see here. Ivan, you got a membership. I'm very happy. Okay. All right. Let me see a couple of last things here at the end. Oh, N Natalie Sue recommends orange slices. Yeah, fruit is great too. Jamie, I don't use any sugar alternatives because you know I don't want to. They're because they're usually chemicals. MM says thoughts on Mira Erasure. I'm conflicted on it. I think that Amber Heard really creates a lot of drama and is a lightning rod that the movie doesn't need. But she was really good in the first movie, and it's odd for her to not be in the second movie. So I think it's like, it's as odd as the Ezra Miller stuff. You know, it just, it's a shadow over the film. Shadowland, I think Melina's new mouth looks great. Yes, it's Mortal Kombat Day. Mortal Kombat came out early for everyone who pre-ordered it before its official launch, I believe, next week. Nuclear Fusion. I do not play any video games. In fact, I do not even own a video game system, I'm afraid. Kyle Selby says, should Peter pursue MJ or another love interest like Gwen or Felicia, a.k.a. Black Cat, in Holland's Spider-Man 4? I think he should still be MJ. Zendaya will definitely still be in the movie. But I'd like to see a little bit of love triangle action, but I don't want it to be Gwen. Uh, who they actually already kind of put in. Well, no, that's not Gwen, but she sure looks like Gwen. I'd love to bring in Black Cat. I think that would be great. GVJ says, hello, Grace from Brussels. Sorry for being late, but happy I can send you a hello. Thanks for keeping, helping to keep my anxiety distracted. My pleasure. I'm glad you could say hello. So let's see here. DJ uh, Verna, no news on Arcane 2, but they did say that it's coming soon. Hannah says, Tony, Tony Chopper is adorable. I'd recommend searching him up, but I imagine he'll look akin to Pikachu somewhat. Okay, I will look him up. I will look him up. Oh, let's 
let's see here. Uh, love, I will cover Arcane too, for sure. Adam says, hello from Lebanon, Grace. I love talking to you all over the globe. Didn't catch a membership, but in four years of watching, I always wanted to ask you your, what your sources get out of giving scoops to journalists. It always made me nervous. Um, well, I think they get excited just like you do about the news, and they want to share it and get it out there. And so I think it's fun. It's like a fun game. So I, th I think that's part of it. And it's, you know, and it's, it's, I, it's fun. It's like really good gossip, you know? It's, it's like really cool to share it. You're like, guess what I heard? And you're like, no, oh my God, no way. And then by giving it to me, I can give it out to people. And then you get to see everybody get excited too. I mean, in my opinion, I think it's coming from a good place. Oh yes, fiction fan. If you wouldn't mind liking the stream and subscribing, that would be appreciated. Samir, I don't believe that Only Murders, they, I still don't think they've given the last two episodes of screeners yet because you're not even up to the eight yet. The show's taken forever to come out. I watched it so long ago. Justin, I'm so glad you made a live stream. Oh, wow, I better get going. Okay. All right, so let me do some shout-outs. Shout-outs, shout-outs, shout-outs. I can't miss my screening. Oh, hey, William J. It says, Grace, can you give a shout out to William J? He is listening while getting yelled at by policyholders. He is working at home from Geico. Ah, good luck, William J. Fight the good fight. Ah, thanks, Gen, Gen D, Faz. Uh, Graymo says, hi from Rainy Atlanta. Are you watching Apple's The Changeling? Decent. Finished servant, well acted, but not satisfied with the explanations. I didn't watch either of those shows, but you know I'm not a big horror fan, so I think that might be the issue. Mary Lynn says, hello from Germany, working on my exam paper. Deadline is in 17 hours. It seems like you got a good amount of time, Mary. I like your Snow White picture there, uh, but break a leg. Reese says, from Scotland, got a flight at 3 a.m. later today. Oh, that's a late flight, boy. Nina, you're in Disneyland? Oh, I'm so jealous. I would love to be in Disneyland right now. Bryce, I'm so glad you were gifted a membership. Hey, Matt, so good to see you in Michigan as always. Mandy's in Peru. Oh, let's see here. Trying to look for some non-members, subscribers. Just so that, uh, Armin says, big fan watching from Bosnia. Love your content. Oh, hi, Armin. It's nice. It's great to see you. Santa Sideup says, hi from Greece. Packing my suitcase to fly to, Bel to Berlin for partying. Oh, you're going to have a great time. Uh, Anthony Mondragon says, hello from Dallas. Well, Morfeo says hello from Phoenix, Arizona, having lunch at work. Hi there. Hi, Harry. You think the Marvels will flop hard? I, I think it could happen. I don't know if it's going to flop. Oh, let's see here. Art Duchess, thinking about your love triangle idea. Deborah Whitman from the Spider-Man series. I don't know. I like your little pink wavy hands. That's cute. Ah, uh, thanks, the Blue Dragon. Love says, hi, from a gloomy, rainy day in Dallas. I love you too, love. Love all around. Ah, thanks, Greg. I'm glad you like my hair. I actually washed it and blew, blew it out myself this morning. I bought an amazing tool on Amazon. It was the number one hair straightener for blowouts. And I was like, well, if everyone's buying it, maybe, it must, maybe it's good. And it's amazing. Master of Magnets is in Chicago and just happy I caught a live I could comment on. I'm glad you caught it too. That makes me very happy. Anthony Del Rey says, I'm watching while I finish my last hour of work. I work in mental health. Oh, that's such great work, Anthony. I'm sure you're doing so much good. Orlando Huerta says, hello from Mexico. Thanks for all your hard work, especially in these dry times. It's my pleasure. Thanks for sticking with me. We're going to get through this. Let's see here. I don't know if it's the Revlon brush. Here, I'll look it up. Hold on, I'll find it for you. I guess I should tell you because it's uncool to promise luxurious locks and then not tell you how to get them. So it should be in my past orders. Let me see if I can find it. I did buy it a long time ago. Hmm. Did I buy it in 2022? Hold on, I'm looking. Yes, it is the Revlon one. This one. I purchased it in June 2022. 
Hold on, let me see where I can see what I'm showing you. It's the Revlon, whatever this is called. Is it still number one? Let's see. I don't know if it's still number one on the, in the thing, but that's what I got. And I absolutely love it. It changed my life. Let's see here. I was not very good at blowing out my hair beforehand. I was like, how does anybody do this? Oh, Chiara says, hello, Grace. So happy that I can comment today. I followed you since your very first videos. Oh, that makes me so happy. Thank you because you're currently helping me get through a tonsillectomy. Love from Italy. Well, I'm sure living in Italy is also helping you. Uh, but that's fantastic. I'm sorry you had to have a tonsillectomy, but we're here for you. Uh, H. Hander says, hello from Botswana. Oh, that's so cool. And then uh, we says, coming at you at 5 a.m. from Malaysia. Oh, I love it. And Samir says, love your videos. Been watching since 2020 from India. Ah, oh, that's great. Uh, let's see here. Babar says, love from Pakistan, as always. Ah, oh, love to you too, Babar. And Ilion says, hello from Switzerland, enjoying another BTT stream. Oh, Toon Dude, the Nielsen numbers are out. I was wondering about that. I'll check them out. We'll talk about them on Sunday. And then Celine says, hello from New Jersey. Ah, thank you, Celine. Hello in New Jersey. I love New Jersey. I go there all the time. I love that state. Positive vibes to you too, Buzz. All right, I must go or I'm going to miss my screening. Okay, I had a great time. Thank you for joining me, and I will see you tomorrow. We will live stream tomorrow. Okay, three streams a week, baby. Okay, bye. Bye, everybody.